Hey everybody, and Tony here with the review of Mozart's Die Entführung aus dem Sarail, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Donald Runnickles. The production, set design, and some of the reworkings of the text were done by Rodrigo Garcia. The assistant set designer and video designer was Ramon Diago. The costumes were done by Hussein Chalayan. The lights were handled by Carlos Marqueri. The assistant director was Teresa Raiba. The chorus master was William Spaulding, and the dramaturgy was handled by Jörg Königsdorf and Anne Oppermann. And this also marks the second production that I've seen of this particular opera, and it also had its premiere 12 days ago at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. Now let's get on to what I thought about the production. If I could sum up what I thought about this particular production of The Abduction of the Seraglio, in a few words, they would be this. Distracting kind of pandering, kind of nightmarish, kind of trying to go for easy laughs, trying to pander to the hip and trendy crowd, trying way too hard, and it just doesn't have a lot of real focus, and at times it can be quite heavy-handed. That's the short version. So basically, what the opera begins with is Belmonte driving with his monster truck and even before the opera begins we see like a huge orb made out of silk and at first i wasn't really so sure what the orb was supposed to stand for until i found out that this was basically supposed to stand for like all the dirty secrets that a lot of these characters have and a lot of the secret ambitions that a lot of them have. Like, for example, we have this scene where Osmin sings Solche hergelaufene Laffen, and we see him, like, going in front of this tablet, and we see him being face-swapped with a gorilla. The other instance where this was being used with Pedrillo's Frisch zum Kampf, where Pedrillo, every time he sings his nine Ach nein, ich sei gewacht. He basically goes in front of the tablet and we see him wearing a Batman mask and trying to act all tough and stuff. Not to mention, what's also very interesting about this production was the choice of having Belmonte, Pedrillo, Constanza, Blonde, and Osmin speak English throughout the most part. And also, what was so interesting was the fact that the Pasha was portrayed by a woman. And I was kind of caught off guard at first because I was so used to having the Pasha being portrayed by a man, usually being a native German speaker or anyone who is madly fluent in the German language, usually being a man. And when I found out that the Pasha for tonight was going to be done by a woman, I was kind of caught off guard and was really skeptical. But I'll get to the actress who portrayed her later. Her name is Annabelle Mandeng. So I have a lot to say about her. And at times, what I seem to notice is that in terms of the plot of this production, it lacked cohesion. There were just certain things that were kind of all over the place. It didn't really have a lot of structure. And at times, it seemed to mostly focus on Belmontes and Pedrillo's friendship and not so much on how Constanza and Blonde are dealing with each other. And at times it does seem really weird and almost nightmarish, especially where Constanza's Traurigkeit wad mir zum Nose was concerned. The whole scene where a lot of these naked women and semi-naked women are brought in, some in tanks, some in refrigerators, was awful. It was just skin-crawlingly awful. I mean, why would anyone want to watch this? This seems so tasteless in my opinion, and it seemed rather sick. I almost felt sick inside my stomach. 
and there were almost times where I almost wanted to leave the theater just because there were just certain lines that seemed rather dumb or seemed so forced, especially when said out of the characters' mouths. Now, in the traditional libretto, you have Belmonte, Pedrillo, and Constanza being Spaniards, Blonde being the only English girl, and having Osmin and the Pasha being Turkish. In this production, we have Belmonte, Pedrillo, and Constanza as Americans, Blonde as Australian, or probably half Australian, half American, or probably American with a very strong Australian background, Osmin and the Pasha being German, and everyone else being in a certain, like, different race. So it was kind of something. So I'm not going to mince words here. I didn't really care so much about it. The production did not resonate with me so much. There were just certain things that I felt needed to be ironed out. There were just certain things I felt that were needed to be just more cohesive. And when it came to the scenes between Constanza and Blonde, it just seemed as though that I was only watching only Constanza's scenes and only Blonde's scenes. It basically seemed to try to pander to what audiences think is hip and cool rather than finally just telling a story. So overall, I was not really too impressed. Sometimes I wished that everything could have been straightened out. I wished it could have been more cohesive. I wished it could have just did away with all of the quote-unquote trendy stuff and then just let it be something genuine. With that said, even though I didn't care so much about the production, I have to say that the performing is extremely top tier. Let's start off with tonight's Belmonte, Matthew Newland. Over the years, I have seen him sing a lot of supporting roles and even did a few starring roles here and there. And this is definitely a testament to how he's able to cope up with a lot of Belmonte's music very well. He sings all the notes very well. He has a very fine technique helped by his fine lyric tenor voice and his stage presence was absolutely noble and at times rather caddish. He does combine nobility and that caddish nature that he brings out in Belmonte, especially when he sees a lot of different women. Unfortunately, I don't really like his costume. And special note to the costume designers, please, those pants look absolutely hideous on Matt Newland. He's a very attractive gentleman. He's tall, elegant, and quite good looking. And to see him wear those type of pants, that doesn't really mesh well with just how truly handsome he is. Okay, so overall, I really have to say that Matthew Newland's singing is very well done, and it's helped by his lovely lyrical instrument, which I always love in terms of Mr. Newland. However, I seem to sort of miss a little bit of that spinto -y tone that I always love in singers like Anton Dermota, Nikolai Geda, Peter Schreia, Daniel Kirch, Paul Groves, and even to some extent Jonas Kaufmann, who also used to sing a lot of the lyrical tenor roles before, and nowadays he's singing a lot of the spinto and dramatic tenor roles. But even then, I definitely have to say that Matthew Newland's singing was so well done, and his stage presence was totally fine, combining a lot of Belmonte's caddish natures and combining a little bit of that nobility as well. Singing his servant, Pedrillo, is the equally wonderful American lyric tenor, James Krishik, who has an excellent lyric tenor voice. He has an excellent technique. His singing is so nuanced and so crisp 
and his stage presence was equally as wonderful. And I also love the chemistry between Matthew and James. You really do feel like these two are best buds. And when it comes to their careers as tenors, I can definitely see a bright future for the both of them singing more of the bel canto stuff, specifically from the likes of Rossini. The one that comes to mind is Armida, where we have Carlo and Ubaldo, and then you have the likes of many of the Rossini operas, which calls for two tenors, and you even have them singing in duets. That would be a very wonderful project for the both of them to do. With all that said and done, I really have to say that James Krischuk's singing and his acting were both well done, and I especially dig the chemistry he has with Matthew Newland's Belmonte. And then we go to their lady love, starting off with Constanza, sung tonight by Catherine Lewick. Over the years, I have followed Catherine Lewick's career as a coloratura soprano. I have noticed that she started out doing some of the character roles like Berta from Barbiere, Pisana from I Due Foscari, and the First Lady from The Magic Flute. However, the one role that put her on the map as an opera singer and the one role which she has dominated throughout all the international stages from North America to South America to Europe to Asia was the Queen of the Night from The Magic Flute. I love her in that role, and I think she's a very, very wonderful Queen of the Night, but I'm not going to talk about her Queen of the Night because I have yet to seen it live. I'm going to be talking about her Constanza. Her Constanza is so well sung, and it was just very wonderful throughout all the registers, hearing her use her excellent technique and her stage presence was absolutely multidimensional. And what more can I say about someone like Miss Lewick? She has come so far and has achieved great success as an internationally known coloratura soprano. Not only did she specialize in the Queen of the Night, but she also specialized in a lot of other roles like Maria Stuarda, Constanza, the Nightingale from Stravinsky's The Nightingale, and many, many other great roles for a coloratura soprano. Heck, I feel that she has a bright future for singing roles like Amina from La Sonambula, Elvira from I Puritani, Beatrice di Tenda, Lucia de la Marmora, I think she probably already sang that role, Anna Bolena, Elisabetta from Roberto de Verus, Semiramide, Matilde from Guillaume Tell, Pamire from La Siege de Corinthe, and a lot of the great roles for any dramatic coloratura soprano. This woman was excellent in every single way. Her acting was totally multidimensional, making Constanza a very feisty, strong, and very fun-loving independent woman, yet is also true to her name, which means Constance. She's basically someone who is not willing to cheat on anyone unless it's to regain her love for Belmonte. It seems as though that throughout the opera, Catherine Lewick as Constanza seems to be very constant and true to the Pasha and really seems to basically be on her good side or her crazy side from time to time. So what more can I say about Miss Lewick as Constanza? She was absolutely fabulous with a scintillating timbre, an excellent technique, and a great navigation of that really difficult tessitura, which Constanza is very famous for. And then we go to her chambermaid, Blonde, sung tonight by Siobhan Stagg. And I've also been following her career for about three years as well. First seeing her in some character roles, like the First Lady 
from the Magic Flute and Contessa di Ciprano, and then seeing her build up to some bigger roles, like Zofie Fanenal from Rules and Cavalier. And she's going to be singing Gilda in a few months or so. And here she is really delivering the goods when it comes to her scintillating technique, all of her fine high notes, and that delicate timbre which she is so well known for. She is, without a doubt, one of the finest young coloratura sopranos I have ever had the pleasure of listening to. And when it comes to her chemistry, or almost lack of it, with Catherine Lewick's Constanza, I do wish that the directors could have had a scene between the both of them before Constanza's Matan Aria, because it's such a pity. We have two of the most gorgeous, elegant, and absolutely cute coloratura sopranos I have ever seen on stage, and you can't give them a scene? What the heck, man? What the heck? Anyways, going back to Siobhan Stagg as Blonde. She was superb. She manages to give a spunk, a vivacity, and an overall gorgeousity, which really makes Blonde come alive. And come to think of it, I would always love it when I would see sopranos like Catherine Lewick and Siobhan Stagg perform. I mean, who knows what the future will hold for the both of them. Miss Lewick could be the Queen of the Night to Stagg's Pamina. She could be probably also be singing Eletra to her Elia, the Countess Amaviva to her Susanna, Sifare to her Aspasia, China to her Julia, Amina to her Lisa, Magda to her Lisette, and maybe Alice Ford to her Nanetta. Who knows? The possibilities are endless with these two excellent sopranos. And then we get to the basso who sang Osmin, Tobias Kira. I've been following his career too. And let me just tell you, he's still as excellent as ever. His singing is of the highest order. He maintains his plush, rich, and really wonderful velvety tones. And his stage presence is totally fine all throughout, making Osmin a very rugged character and at times a pretty humorous character as well. So he was absolutely wonderful. And then we get to Annabelle Mandeng as the Pasha. I've never heard of her before, but I seem to notice that she is a very well-known German actress who specializes in TV, film, and theater. She was absolutely wonderful as the Pasha. First of all, she has a very statuesque and athletic build, which makes her so perfect for these demanding and dominating female characters. She moves like a panther on stage. You bought it every time she was on stage, whether she was speaking, whether she was saying a monologue, or even in the quiet moments. Whether she spoke German or whether she spoke English, she handles her lines very well, helped with her overall grace. She has a grace that few other actresses can ever compare. And she also has an inner ferocity which she is so willing to bring out without going over the top. So with that said, the performances here were absolutely well done. And the conducting done by Maestro Donald Runnicles was also very well done. Though, I also would have loved to say one more thing about the entire production. When it came to the first choral number of Zing der Große Basse Lieder, I didn't see any vivacity whatsoever. It was stale and it seemed kind of bland. There could have been a lot more dancing, a lot more choreography, and a lot more finesse. And the other thing would have been, there could have been a lot more scenery. Because every time I think in Feudal Azdem Zagayel, I would always think grand scenery of gold, silver, and 
everything else in between. So overall, not too impressed with the production whatsoever, but the performances were very solid. Special mention really has to go to Catherine Lewick as Constanza and Siobhan Stagg as Blonde, as these two were, in my opinion, the stars of the evening. When it comes to these two awesome coloratura sopranos, you can never go wrong whatsoever. And I totally applaud them for their artistry and for their versatility. Well, that's all for now. And as for you, did you like the production? Did you feel indifferent to it? Did you not like it? Did you hate it? Or did you just feel kind of in the middle between it? Let me know in the comments below. And until then, this is Antoni signing off and tune in tomorrow where I review Massenet's Cendrillon at the Commercial Opa Berlin. Take care, everybody.